Hey everyone, welcome to All Techies. I'm Pankaj Rai and in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the inline class. Well, inline class really adds up to the performance. And if you are using type alias in your program, then based on the necessity, you may think about switching the type alias with inline class. So let's check out what it is. But before that, let me talk about the inline itself. Well, inline you might have seen a lot with a function, which is written something like this. Inline, function, and then you write your function name. Eventually, you will have the function definition and at the call site of this function. That means the moment where I call this function, at this place, during runtime, it will automatically replace it with the function definition. And this is really helpful because it avoids adding this function to the stack and then popping out from the stack once the work of this function is done. So by this way, you avoid adding function to the stack. But inline function is very straightforward because it's a function and the function have a definition. So at call site, we just replace this function call with the function definition. But what about the inline class? How inline class is going to work? Because class is not that straightforward like a function. Say for example, you have a class called user. Now this class may have an object or it may also have a function. So when you create an object of this class, then during runtime also, it's going to be an object of a class itself. Now, how about the data class? So instead of uh, a user, so let me create a data class, say user age. And inside this, let me just have a single parameter which asks about the age of a person. So here, if I create user age object, then at runtime, again, this is going to be of user age class type because it's a data class. It adds up the two equals and two string methods, also the getter setters, but eventually it's a class. So once you create an object of it, it's of this class object itself. So again, the memory is allocated from the heap. So we have seen for this straightforward class, memory is allocated from heap. If you say data class, again, memory is getting allocated from the heap. But in case, when the functionality is as straightforward as having a single parameter, then how about creating a new type? And that's where inline class comes into action. Now say for example, I have this at the rate JVM inline value class age val age int. Now this one is the inline class where at the rate JVM inline indicates that this class is going to be an inline class on the JVM platform. Now let's see this once again. I say about well age equals to age and some value. Now what happens at runtime? Well, earlier we have seen they were having an object and at runtime also object remains the objects. But here, with the inline class, we have a bit of difference. What happens is, at runtime, this age will get replaced 
with the value directly. So eventually you are writing something like this which look like a class and having a parameter associated with it and eventually it is a class with a class name and the parameter but at runtime this class name will automatically will be replaced and you will see only and only the value associated with this and that's where the performance optimization comes into action here even the age is class and we are passing some age value as a parameter but at runtime all these things get replaced with the straightforward value which you have specified as a parameter that's where inline class helps you to create new types also but where do it's going to be useful well it is useful at all those places where along with the value you also want to specify what type of value it is associated with like for example you have age and then you have a zip code so now whenever you want to specify the zip code so you can say zip code and then let it have a zip code whenever you want to specify age you can have age specify the age so eventually as i said it's not about the class object but it's all about the value at runtime it will be replaced with a value so when you specify with the class name then it also gives an indication a very clear indication that this value belongs to this particular functionality and we are not just limited to an inline class with a single parameter rather it also provides other functionalities of a class for example the init block and here we may write require age greater than 0 so now if i say age 0 it's going to throw an exception because we have provided a condition check that we always want age to be greater than 0 but be very careful with android because this is going to throw an exception that means eventually it may lead to app crash if you do not handle the crash associated with it also you may have a functions as usual like a class and all of them is going to be a static function so that's it for this inline class if you have find this tutorial useful then please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so as to get videos on the latest topics of android kotlin and firebase thank you and stay tuned